let's take a look at the skill chest tube monitoring and care. So this is gonna happen routinely in maybe a medical surgical unit or an intensive care unit. So before we get started, don't forget your hand hygiene and provide privacy for your patient. Now we wanna make sure we explain the procedure to our patient and put on gloves. Now this is a great time to complete a respiratory and pain assessment from our patient. Now if you remember, they just had a chest tube inserted by the physician. This can be really painful. So while the patient has a chest tube, make sure you assess your patient. Now we also want to check the vital signs as another part of the assessment and look for any indications of distress. With the collection system, we want to note the character, the consistency, and the amount of drainage in the collection chamber. Now this is really needs to be done at regular intervals. Now one way we can do this is mark the drainage level with a marker on the actual system itself by noting the date and the time on the collection chamber. So if you ever go into a unit and take a look at a chest tube that maybe the patient's had for a few days, you'll see lots of notes, lots of marks, dates, and initials on there. Don't forget to check for fluctuations in the air leak monitor with each breath. And don't forget the air leak monitor is a really important piece on chest tube monitoring care. If there's any air leak, this is where we're going to see it. So look for bubbling here. Now if the chest tube drainage system is placed to suction, ensure that suction's present. And we're going to know this by the suction control chamber. Now if you remember on a wet suction system, it's controlled by the level of the water. And we should see a little bit of bubbling here. Now, where do we not want bubbling? The air leak monitor. Suction control chamber, that's where we're gonna wanna see bubbling. Now, we wanna ensure the integrity of the drainage tubing. We wanna check this for any kinks, any weird loops. We wanna make sure that stays nice, open, and so drainage and suction can be facilitated. Now, we talked a lot about monitoring the actual system itself. Don't forget about your patient, and especially where the chest tube's inserted. Don't forget to palpate the chest tube dressing for crepitus. Okay, what is crepitus? So just think about crepitus, Rice Krispies. That doesn't even sound like it's related, right? But all this means that there's gonna be an air leak underneath the skin. So if you palpate that chest tube dressing, you may feel kind of like a Rice Krispie feeling. That's not a good sign. We need to call the doctor. What this means is there's an air leak underneath the skin. So when we palpate around that dressing, we're gonna palpate around the dressing itself, that side of the chest tube, and even all the way up to the neck. So there can be air leaks here and we wanna assess for that. Now if able, change the chest tube dressing if it's soiled or if it's ordered by the healthcare provider. We just talked about wet suction monitoring. Now let's take a look at the dry. Now just as we did before, we're gonna note the character, consistency, and the amount of drainage in the collection chamber. This really needs to be done each shift and at regular intervals. Now we can mark that drainage level with a marker by noting the date and the time on the collection chamber itself. Now if you remember that air leak's a really important place to look, that air leak monitor. And just like the wet, the dry has one too. So just as a refresher, if you see bubbling from right to left in the air leak monitor, we need to call our physician. And one more thing, what about the severity of the air leak? Well, we can check this in this monitor from the numbers and how much bubbling and how far left it reaches. So one is low, all the way up to five is high. So if you can imagine the higher the number, the worse the air leak. So keep an eye on this. Now with dry suction, this is where it differs. Now this one has the specific controlled setting for us, like the negative 10, negative 20, for example. It also has this bellow. So at this image here, this shows you the bellow, which is associated with dry suction. Now we wanna make sure suction is working properly. And how we do this is by checking that bellow. We want that at the level at the indicator or even a little past. So just make sure you check this when dry suctioning is occurring. We also wanna check the integrity of the drainage tube. Make sure it's free of kinks. And don't forget to look at the chest tube dressing itself. We talked a lot about the system, but always go back to your patient. So palpate around that chest tube dressing. 
Now, if there's a problem, sometimes you may palpate or feel some like rice crispy feeling underneath the skin. That's an issue because air is leaked underneath the skin. Now that feeling can go from the chest tube dressing all the way up to the lateral side of the patient, all the way even up to their neck. So make sure you're assessing your patient thoroughly. Now, if able, change the chest tube dressing if it's soiled or if ordered by the healthcare provider. Now, after the system has been set up, let's take a look at a few considerations that are really important. For example, place that drainage system below the level of the patient's chest. I know we've mentioned this earlier, but I can't emphasize this enough. Also, for convenience, you can hang the system at the bedside with the hooks that come with the system. Now, sometimes we may have to put that system on the floor and there's foot stands for that. Also, don't forget to always check that tubing and make sure it's free of kinks. Now we can remove our gloves, perform our hand hygiene, and make sure we document that procedure.